Many of us are cheese enthusiasts these days, and learning how to make your own cheese at home is something that I want to know how to do it. So I thought I'd teach you how to make ricotta at home. So we start first with eight cups of whole milk. And I always buy nowadays milk that is marked organic. And one and a half cups of organic heavy cream. One teaspoon of salt. And turn on your heat, uh, sort of medium high. And after this mixture reaches 195 degrees, add one quarter of a cup of fresh lemon juice. Now I find the easiest way to squeeze lemons is cut off the two little ends. And to get a quarter of a cup, I lemons this size, these are tiny. It'll probably take at least two lemons. And you can easily squeeze the lemons in this handy little juicer. Now strain the juice. You don't want any seeds and you certainly don't want any lumps in your ricotta. And you know, don't throw these away. Throw them in a pitcher of iced water. Uh, it'll flavor the water and it'll be so healthy for you. So now our milk and cream mixture is 195 degrees. Add your lemon juice. And I'm just taking it off the hot stove because you want this to sit for five minutes. The lemon juice is acting as a coagulant. You can see already that curds are forming. So five minutes that really needs to form as many curds as possible. So look what's happened. It has really curdled and forming those delectable ricotta curds. Now spoon this gently into cotton cheesecloth, put right over a bowl. And this stays for 20 minutes in the cheesecloth while all the way the watery side product drains through the cheesecloth into the bowl below. And the ricotta is left in the cheesecloth. And really that's the process of making your own homemade ricotta cheese. And while this is draining, I'll show you how to make a rhubarb compote that tastes really, really good with the ricotta. This rhubarb is right out of my garden. It's a beautiful red variety, a, a young variety. I like the small stalks. Sometimes you get rhubarb that's about that big around and uh, it can be a little bit tough. This is sweet and delectable. Cut off the ends. This is an unusual vegetable that's considered a fruit. Rhubarb is botanically speaking um, a vegetable, but with the addition of some sugar and a pie crust or a crumble topping, it does make a beautiful dessert. So cut this into like half inch pieces. And you notice how I'm gathering all the stalks into one little pile and then cutting. This saves a lot of time. The leaves of the rhubarb are very big and very showy, but they contain oxalic acid, making them toxic. Uh, and you should not bring those even into the house, just leave them in the compost heap outside if you pick your own rhubarb. So if you have a deer problem, you can plant a lot of rhubarb and the deer will not touch the rhubarb. And so I have two tablespoons of water in my pan, put all the rhubarb into the pan, and for this amount, which is a little less than a pound, 10 ounces, add two thirds of a cup of sugar. If you were using a whole pound, I would say a cup of sugar. It's very tart and does need sweetening. Let it start to simmer and just let it stew. It is delicious. So the rhubarb is tender. It's cooked sufficiently and let it cool. You can chill it or just bring it to room temperature. And now I'll show you how to use your ricotta and the rhubarb. Here is the ricotta after 20 minutes. It's still jiggly and it's still dripping. If you want a denser ricotta, here is one. This is about an hour in the refrigerator, so it's chilled. It is much denser. And you can just turn this ricotta out into a bowl. Creamy, luscious, delicious. That is what homemade ricotta looks like. So if you like, take 
a couple of spoons of this and top it with a little bit of that pretty, oh, so pretty, rhubarb compote. And there you have a delectable dessert. Rhubarb topped homemade ricotta cheese. You've got a fruit and cheese plate all in one.